Cultural evolution is a dangerous child for any species to let loose on its planet. By the time you realise what's happening, the child is a toddler up and causing havoc, and it's too late to put it back. We humans are Earth's Pandoran species. We're the ones who let the second replicator out of its box, and we can't push it back in. We're seeing the consequences all around us now. That, I suggest, is the view that comes out of taking memetics seriously. And it gives us a new way of thinking about not only what's going on on our planet, but what might be going on elsewhere in the cosmos. So, first of all, I'd like to say something about memetics and the theory of memes. And secondly, how this might answer questions about who's out there, if indeed anyone is. So, memetics. Memetics is founded on the principle of universal Darwinism. Darwin had this amazing idea. Indeed, some people say it's the best idea anybody ever had. Isn't that a wonderful thought, that there could be such a thing as a best idea anybody ever had? <laughs> Do you think there could? <laughs> Someone says no very loudly from over there. Well, I say yes, and if there is, I give the prize to Darwin. Why? Because the idea was so simple, and yet it explains all design in the universe. I would say not just biological design, but all of the design that we think of as human design. It's all just the same thing happening. What did Darwin say? I know you know the idea, natural selection, but let me just paraphrase um, The Origin of Species, uh, 1859, in, in a few sentences. What Darwin said was something like this. If you have creatures that vary, and that can't be doubted. I've been to the Galapagos and I've measured the size of the beaks and the size of the turtle shells and so on and so on, and a hundred pages later. <laughs> and if there is a struggle for life such that nearly all of these creatures die, and I, this can't be doubted, I've read Malthus and I've calculated how long it would take for elephants to cover the whole world if they bred unrestricted and so on and so on, and, and another hundred pages later. <laughs> and if the very few that survive pass on to their offspring whatever it was that helped them survive, then those offspring must be better adapted to the circumstances in which all this happened than their parents were. You see the idea? If, 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 then. He had no concept of the idea of an algorithm, but that's what he described in that book. And this is what we now know as the evolutionary algorithm. The principle is you just need those three things, variation, selection, and heredity. And, as Dan Dennett puts it, if you have those, then you must get evolution. Or design out of chaos without the aid of mind. There's one word I love on that slide. What do you think my favorite word is? Chaos? No. What? Mind? No. Without. No, not without. <laughs> you try them all in order, hmm? Must, uh, must, must, must. This is what makes it so amazing. You don't need a designer or a plan or foresight or anything else. If there's something that is copied with variation and it's selected, then you must get design appearing out of nowhere. You can't stop it. Must is my favorite word there. Now, what's this to do with memes? Well. The principle here applies to anything that is copied with variation and selection. We're so used to thinking in terms of biology, we think about genes this way. Darwin didn't, of course, he didn't know about genes. He talked mostly about animals and plants, but also about languages evolving and becoming extinct. But the principle of universal Darwinism is that any information that is varied and selected will produce design. And this is what Richard Dawkins was on about in his 1976 bestseller, The Selfish Gene. The information that is copied, he called the replicator. It selfishly copies, not meaning it kind of sits around inside cells going, I want to get copied, but that it will get copied if it can, regardless of the consequences. It doesn't care about the consequences because it can't, because it's just information being copied. And he wanted to get away from everybody thinking all the time about genes. And so he said, is there another replicator out there on the planet? Uh, yes, there is. Look around you. 
here will do in this room. All around us, still clumsily drifting about in its primeval soup of culture, is another replicator. Information that we copy from person to person by imitation, by language, by talking, by telling stories, by wearing clothes, by doing things. This is information copied with variation selection. This is, is design process going on. He wanted a name for the new replicator. So he took the Greek word, my meme, which means that which is imitated. Remember that, that's the core definition, that which is imitated, and abbreviated it to meme just because it sounds good and made a good meme, an effective spreading meme. So that's how the idea came about. It's important to stick with that definition. Um, the whole science of memetics is, is much maligned, much misunderstood, much feared, but a lot of these problems can be um, avoided by remembering the definition. A meme is not equivalent to an idea, it's not an idea, it's not equivalent to anything else really. Stick with the definition. It's that which is imitated, or information which is copied from person to person. So, uh, let's see some memes. Um, well, uh, you, sir, you've got those glasses hung around your neck in that particularly fetching way. Um, I wonder whether you invented that idea for yourself or copied it from someone else. If you copied it from someone else, it's a meme. And what about, uh, oh, I can't see any interesting memes here. How do you have one? Who's got some interesting memes for me? Um, oh, well, your earrings. Now, that's, I, I don't suppose you invented the idea of earrings. You probably went out and bought them. There are plenty more in, in the shops. That's something that's passed on from person to person. Um, all the stories that we're telling, well, of course, Ted is a great meme fest, masses of memes. The way to think about memes, though, is to think, why do they spread? They're selfish information. They will get copied if they can. But some of them will be copied because they're good or true or useful or beautiful. Some of them will be copied even though they're not. Some, it's quite hard to tell why. Um, there's one particular curious meme which I, I rather enjoy, and I'm glad to say, as I expected, I found it when I came here, and I'm sure all of you found it too. You go to your nice, posh international hotel somewhere, and you come in and you put down your clothes and you go to the bathroom, and what do you see? 